Hi, welcome to Returning to Mia. Now, before we get started, did you play Summer with Mia? Great! Would you like to see a short recap of Summer with Mia, or do you want to start Returning to Mia right away? All right then, enjoy! And that's pretty much it. Roll it!
Still half asleep, you slide yourself out of bed and throw on some clothes.
and with a quiet sob, he runs off. You rush back home to talk to Mia about what just happened. As you enter the front door, you race upstairs to her bedroom. Deciding against it, you continue on your way towards the bar. Stroll on your way back home. Unfortunately, Vivian is still there, and, over the next few hours, she keeps bothering the living shit out of you. Later that night, Excusing yourself from the table, you walk upstairs to your bedroom. After what felt like forever, Grace finally decides which three outfits she wants to try on. Suddenly, the stall beside Grace opens up.
Looking back at Isla, you can't help but remember what you just saw. As a brief silence occurs, you become almost certain you hear the distant sound of crashing waves. Before you can finish, you hear the beep of a call that just ended. Uncomfortable with Cindy's decision to sleep the night at the beach, you call her back. But she doesn't answer. Going back into your room, you quietly get dressed to leave the house. As she says that, you feel a pang of guilt shoot through you. With that, you head off towards the beach to fetch Cindy. Unresponsive, you nudge her a little harder. Looking that way, however, you see nothing. Sebastian's place, to be exact. 
Knowing this makes you all the more curious, especially because it was the kind of giggle that was unmistakable. Trying to push the thought aside, you turn to walk home. However, you soon stop. Again, looking back in the direction of that distinct giggle, and just as you were hoping it wouldn't, your curiosity gets the best of you. Crossing the street, you stealthily make your way closer and closer toward the noise. Before you know it, you find yourself at the back of his bar, crouched behind a wall. The now clearly distinguishable voices of two people are only feet away, and one of them sounded very familiar. Making yourself as small as humanly possible, you ever so slightly peek up from behind the wall that's concealing you? Leaning back out of sight, you find yourself completely shocked by what you just heard. However, before you have barely a moment to stew in your disdain for him, you're struck with an intense sense of hypocrisy. As you begin wallowing in self-pity, you hear footsteps approaching. Remaining as quiet as possible, you zip away from Sebastian's bar and out of sight. On your way home, you find yourself struggling to get the picture of Isla out of your head. A picture of her sitting at the dinner table, perhaps under candlelight, most definitely completely alone. You stop dead in your tracks, now seriously considering a thought you've been contemplating for a while. Turning on your heels, you start back in the direction you came from and set off towards Isla's home. A short while later, suddenly you hear the click of the door unlocking. With a beaming smile on her face, Ellie skips off. Simon takes a step closer to you. As he does, you start feeling a nervousness in your chest once again. He looks down at your crotch.
Grace looks to you with a somewhat sheepish glance. placing your hand over the top of hers. Giving her a warm smile, you lift your hand off hers and head for the door. With a final wave, you walk out of the room. Walking over to the control panel, the man begins tinkering around with it. Suddenly, the giant wheel lights up with an almost blinding array of colorful lights. Leaning over Sadie's shoulders, the two of you gaze up at the Goliathan ride. Without even a second of delay, Sadie runs over to jump aboard the wheel. Daring not to make her wait any longer, you quickly go over to join your girlfriend. With the press of a button, the wheel finally starts moving. Remembering what she said to you during a previous heart-to-heart, -heart, Sadie stops herself from saying the word. Taken aback by your words, you see Sadie's lips start trembling ever so slightly. Unable to contain herself, Sadie lunges towards you and throws her arms around your neck. On the ground, you run towards him. Dropping to the ground next to him, you can't help but first focus your attention on the piece of paper atop his chest. However, dealing with that is of secondary importance right now. First, you have to make sure he is still alive. With you press two fingers up to the side of his neck and wait, along with a massive wave of relief, you feel it, a pulse. With that out of the way, you turn your focus back to the paper. Slim, however you have to be sure. 
Reaching towards the sheet, you once again take a deep breath and you pick it up. After a second of hesitation, you look at its content. Scoffing at this, you do your best to play off whatever she's witnessing in your odd demeanor. Clenching her first, Mia slowly swings her left hand around and towards your face. Once more, she throws the same punch at the same speed. Like last time, you duck it. On the third punch, Mia swings her arm around much faster than she did the first two times. For the third and final time, you... You successfully duck underneath the punch in time. Removing his hand, he walks off to his car. Saying what he wanted to, Sebastian gets into his car. Speeding off, he leaves you standing where you are, completely shaken by what he just revealed. Grabbing your phone, you quickly dial Giselle's number. Interrupting your inner argument, Giselle picks up. Taking a seat on the couch, she pats her hand on the spot beside her. As you join her, Giselle looks back at you quizzically. Suddenly, Giselle's left hand catches your eye.
Shocked by what Sebastian just said, your mouth falls open. taking his phone out of his pocket. Sebastian tinkers around for a few seconds. Holding it up to you, something starts playing on the screen. Weakly taking the phone from Mia, Grace puts it up to her ear. Dropping the phone from her ear, Grace stands perfectly still, her eyes glazed over, almost as if her brain is currently in another dimension. Two years ago. Moving away from the door, Stephanie quickly approaches Pete. With Stephanie merely a moment away from glancing at the monitor, Pete, as fast as he can, switches to his desktop. Finally moving away from him, Stephanie heads for the door. And with that, she closes the door on her way out. Little by little, the rain gradually picks up, going from a light patter into a steady sprinkling. Mid-mumble, Sadie shifts her head to the side and sees someone. Spinning away from the guy, she covers her face in embarrassment. Completely forgetting about Rain, Sadie feels her entire body clam up, desperately hoping that you didn't overhear a word she said. Well, not that it matters, she thought because you obviously had your own problems. She's simply a stranger who's definitely sitting far away. Far enough not to... Fighting against the urge to keep her hands plastered over her face. Sadie panics, realizing you're now standing right beside her. However, you're not going anywhere, it seems. So begrudgingly, she uncovers her face and turns her head to look up you. Seeing your eyes locked with hers, Sadie feels all the blood in her body rush to her cheeks, causing them to turn a brighter red than ever before. Still saying nothing, she simply stares at you.
She instinctively blurts this out, not wanting you to think she's a crazy person. Unfortunately, it only made her look even crazier. Stepping forward, you hold out a hand to introduce yourself. However you hand remains awkwardly, you pull away without saying anything. Picking up your glass of wine, you hold it up towards Sadie. Over the next hour or so, but not that either of you are counting, you and Sadie enjoy your meal together. Savoring the exquisite food that you, but mostly Vivian, cooked. Drinking the wonderful wine that cost more than you can afford, yet is still totally worth it. Conversing about both of your hopes, dreams, and goals for the future. Laughing at the inside jokes that you and her had made over the last year and kissing among the golden candlelight that warmed you on this somewhat cool summer night. Simply magical. Everything and more that you wanted it to be. However, before it ends, there's something you have to tell her. Something that you struggled with before. Studying your expression, Sadie sees your demeanor has shifted to something a little more sorrowful. Confused, Sadie says nothing, simply sits and attentively listens to you. Again, she says nothing, not even a face to reveal how surprised she is to hear this. You take a deep breath, readying yourself to be honest with her about your fidelity, or more aptly, your lack thereof. Not that you'll tell her with whom, of course, but... You'll confess as much as you can. Sitting across her, you marvel at Sadie's understanding, her ability to forgive your past transgressions, how kind and empathetic she can be to someone who almost certainly does not deserve such grace. <laughs> 